Now, let's discuss about directors. Who is a director? Section 2 subsection 34 says, Director means a director appointed to the board of a company. Section 2 subsection 10 says, Board of Directors, or, Board, in relation to a company, means the collective body of the directors of the company. Now, these definitions do not provide much help in understanding who a director is. Let's understand who a director is through an example. Imagine you and your family plans to travel to hills by your own car. However, you do not feel confident driving on the hills as you have never driven on the hills. So, you decide to hire a driver who is an expert driving on the hills. In this example, the car can be compared with the company and the passengers, that is, you and your family, can be compared to the shareholders and the driver you hire can be compared to the director. Just like the driver of the car, the director also drives the company towards meeting its goals and objectives. So, director is basically an expert who is appointed by the shareholders to run and manage the affairs of the company. A director is a specialized person, who gives direction to the company, who helps the company achieve its goals, who helps the shareholders to maximize their wealth. Shareholders may have the money to invest in the business, but they may not necessarily have the expertise to do the business and make profits. So, they hire qualified directors to run the business, manage its affair and make strategies through which company can achieve its goals. The provisions relating to director is contained under Companies Act, 2013 from Section 149 to 171, and Section 184 and 185. These sections should be read along with the Companies Appointment and Qualification of Directors Rules, 2014. Now, can a company or partnership firm be appointed as a director of another company? Well, the answer is no. Section 149 of the Companies Act says that the board of director of a company shall consist of individuals only. This means only a natural person can be a director. Another question. Can a director assign his office to another person? The answer again is no. A director is appointed by the shareholders after considering his capabilities. Therefore, he is not allowed to further assign his office to someone else. Section 166 subsection 6 prohibits a director to assign his office to someone else. Now, one more question. Can a minor be appointed as a director? The answer again is no. Minor cannot be appointed as a director. A director is appointed through a contract between the company and the director. Since, a minor cannot contract, he cannot be a director. Moreover, the direction identification number, which is must for every director, is allotted only to the persons above the age of 18 years. Now, just like we are allotted permanent account number and Aadhaar number, the same way, a director is also allotted a director identification number. DIN was introduced in the year 2006. It is a 8-digit unique number and has lifetime validity. Through DIN, the details of director is maintained in a database. Let's look at some important points with respect to DIN. It is mandatory to obtain DIN by all the existing or newly appointed directors. Every director will be allotted only one DIN, irrespective of how many companies he may be appointed as director. 
A director is prohibited by section 155 to hold more than one din. If a director already has designated partnership identification number DPIN issued under section 7 of the Limited Liability Partnership Act 2008 the same will be treated equivalent to din. A person proposed to be appointed as director in a general meeting is required to furnish din. According to section 156 Every existing director is required to intimate his DIN to the company or all companies wherein he is a director, within one month of the receipt of DIN from the central government. Now, apart from director, even the company is obligated under section 157 to intimate the DIN of all of its directors to the registrar of companies in form DIR 3C. This is a very important requirement for the company, because failure to intimate DIN by the company will call for penalty on the company, as well as on the officer of the company in default. This penalty will be minimum 25,000 rupees and 100 rupees for each day of continuing default, subject to a maximum of WS 110000INR. As per section 158, DIN is required to be mentioned on the return, information, or particulars to be furnished under Companies Act, 2013. A person is required to apply through DIR 3 form for allotment of DIN before appointment as a director in an existing company. If after allotment of DIN, there are changes in particulars of the director such as name change, address change etc. Then such director needs to intimate such changes to the central government via DIR 6 form within 30 days of such changes. Director will need to submit necessary proofs of changed particulars along with DIR 6. The director also needs to intimate such changes in the particulars to the company also within 15 days of such change. Once a person is appointed as director and he or she obtains DIN, then such person cannot relinquish or surrender this DIN. This DIN will remain in existence and be valid even if in future the person does not remain director in any company. However, if a person has obtained DIN, but is never appointed as a director in any company, then he may surrender the DIN by applying in Form DIR 5. Such person will also have to submit a declaration that he or she has never been appointed director in any of the company and the DIN was never used for filing any document. If the central government is satisfied, it may deactivate the DIN. Now, the DIN can also be cancelled by the concerned authority on the following grounds. If the DIN is found to be a duplicate. If the DIN is obtained fraudulently or by wrongful means. If the person in whose name DIN was issued is now dead or is declared of unsound mind by a competent court or is adjudicate insolvent. solvent.